It's a holiday weekend in many parts of the world this weekend, and if you're in other parts of the world, a holiday weekend in a few weeks' time. But regardless of if you're taking a four-day week this week, next, or sometime in the next month, the chances are you might be considering making a little bit of a road trip in your EV. We've covered EV etiquette lots on this channel before when it comes to charging stations. We've detailed how you shouldn't just park up and bugger off somewhere for a few hours after parking up at a fast charger. We've explained why it's not a good idea to sit at a fast charging station until your car is 100% full, especially if there's high demand for charging. And we've told you how to trip plan to ensure that your long distance trip is a success. So today I'm going to take a different approach. I'm going to discuss some of the things you should do to ensure that the charging networks around the world are as reliable as possible and that other people know what's working and what's not. We all know how frustrating it is to turn up at a charging station to find out that it's not working. And let's be honest, not all of the charging network operators are very good at recording when their charging stations are online and functional and when they're not. In fact, in the case of one particular network, Naming No Names Electrify America, I've turned up before at a site which claimed all of the stations were online and functional when they were anything but. And if you're making a long distance trip by EV, especially if it's cross country and areas where EV charging infrastructure is still not quite as comprehensive as it needs to be, it could be a major issue. Of course, myself and Kate have given plenty of tips on this channel to help you ensure that you take this into account when trip planning, ensuring that you arrive with a decent buffer to enable you to make it to at least one alternate when possible. Today though, we're going to try and focus on effective tools to help you report faults and let other users know when there's an issue. First, why bother? After all, aren't charging networks meant to be keeping an eye on this? Well, to put it simply, no, they don't always. And frankly, it's a nice thing to do. Being a good citizen to other EV owners is honestly important and it helps ensure that EV charging networks keep operating as effectively as possible. I'm not saying that every time you report something, it will magically get fixed, but at least you'll help ensure others don't waste their time or in fact, get stranded. People regularly assume that the whole being able to get somewhere else is just an EV thing, but it's, it's not. If you're a pilot, you'll be familiar with the term alternate as being an essential part of the flying process. You don't plan enough fuel to get to your destination, you plan enough fuel to get to your destination and then also have enough left to get you to an alternate landing spot, regardless of why you might need to get there. We should all be using that, regardless of the vehicles we drive. Frankly, it would result in a lot fewer calls to breakdown services. If you arrive at a location where there's an issue with a charging station, it's important to communicate that issue to the charging station operator. Sometimes that's not as easy as you might like it to be, and in an ideal world, you're gonna be able to find different charging stations to use while you report the issue with the first. I should point out here that frustratingly, not all network operators have a convenient way of reporting problems. Many don't have a 24 hour support line and some that do have really badly trained staff who don't understand what you're trying to do. That is primarily a problem for a different video, but assuming you've got your charging session working at another stall, the next thing you're going to want to do is to collect information to report the broken station. First, where are you? You'll need a physical location for the charging station, an address is preferred, and then you're gonna need the actual identification for the charging station in particular. Some networks like EA and Tesla use a numbering system to denote which stall you're at, while others like EVgo, for example, use a more friendly name instead of a number. Although I am kind of curious what EVgo is gonna do when it runs out of common names, but <laughs> As I keep saying, that's for another video. Once you know the location and the identification of the unit, you need to know what's happened. Is the unit dead with no lights on? Has someone physically smushed the screen or hit an emergency stop button? Has someone stolen the cable? Or has someone smushed salami into the charge connector to try and break your car in the charging station? 
I wish I was joking, but I've suffered all of these issues at charging stations before, including the salami one. Someone had stuffed some salami into a charging station at an out-of-town shopping mill near here, presumably either as a prank or a protest against EVs. And we tried plugging said CCS1 handle into a loner Polestar 2. It was messy and we spent a long time retrieving rancid, gone-off meat out of the car and the plug. As always, a photograph is a good idea, and if there's an email address on the charger or the app that you use to initiate charging, you can use that to submit a fault report. Include plenty of details, time, date, make a model of your car and what happened. And these are all important because believe it or not, some networks actually have engineers on staff that wait for it, look at logs to figure out what happened. But logs are complicated and long and take a lot of time to peruse if you don't have a timestamp to go off. So just saying, it just stopped working last Saturday isn't really helpful. Saying, yeah, I was at this location at this time, including the time zone to be super clear, and then this happened. Well, it helps the engineers hone in to what exactly went wrong and it allows them to fix it more quickly. In my experience, unless you really do need to use the station and require support from someone on the phone immediately, Emails are frankly more effective than just calling. I'm going to give you an example of this based off of a real world experience that I had earlier this month. I had to visit a local EA station because we had a Kia EV9 press car that needed to get fully charged before returning back to the press fleet that evening and there wasn't enough time left to fully charge it here at the studio. When I arrived at the charging station, there was a gentleman there with a Volkswagen ID4 who was actually on the phone to EA support because his car wasn't charging and worse still, the charging station wouldn't let go of the cable. EA's phone support was useless. I mean, they are tier one support staff who tend to be not very well versed on technical issues and just tend to read scripts designed to help noobs charge. but. I interrupted him and showed him how to manually release the cable and he was able to detach the car from the charging station and find another station to charge at. But it kind of proves my point that phone support can sometimes be a little naff. So you've got your description, your photos and your location. Send that off to the relevant support email and ensure that you give your contact information too. It might not always work, but at least you've tried. Oh, and for extra bonus points, if you're feeling spicy, make a polite but frustrated post on social media and tag the relevant company. Channel your inner Brit if you're not British. That's like kryptonite to PR teams, and you'll be really surprised at how quickly that issue will get resolved. With the problem reported to the charging station provider, let's look at other things you should do to let other people know about the fault. And the first one is really cool, and I've got to give kudos to the Tesla community for this one. It's basically throwing the charge cable over the top of the charging station if it reaches in a little loop that is a great way to let other people know visually at a glance that the charging station is buggered and you can't use it. Of course, you can't do that with every charging station, but for those where it is possible, it's a phenomenal way to ensure that other people don't waste their time parking next to a broken charging station. This is well known among Tesla owners, but given that Tesla superchargers are now open to other EVs in Europe and now open to other EVs in the US and Canada, knowing this little sign is akin to knowing what the little double tap on the helmet means for motorbikes. Seriously. Knowing the signs is a useful trick. I once saved myself from a speed trap thanks to another biker giving me the double helmet tap. And I've saved other bikers from a similar fate too. When you get behind the wheel of an EV, you're also joining a community. So knowing the basics and the etiquette and the shorthand signs is kind of important. The most effective way to notify others of problems though is to spend some time signing up for a relevant charging app and then using it. There are a bunch of different ones depending on where you live in the world, but 
PlugShare Chargeway and the Open Charge map are all great ways to both rate charging stations as well as reporting issues to other users with them. Not only do you get to report issues, which will then result in the rating dropping for that site, giving people a hint that something is wrong, but you can also submit photos and other tips for EV owners. For example, if you have found a great place to eat nearby, you can actually add that as a comment to that charging station. Or perhaps you found that one of the stalls and a bank of charging stations is notoriously unreliable, so you can note that too. And if the location is difficult to find, photos really help. I have found multiple out of the way charging stations before thanks to user submitted photos on both Chargeway and PlugShare. Additionally, while this is by no means a given, you'll find that the more proactive charging providers actually check those apps on a regular basis and some even comment when said units have been fixed. At the end of the day, a poorly rated site is bad news for those companies and since they don't usually own the charging database, that PlugShare is owned by EVgo for full transparency, it's within their corporate interests to get said sites fixed ASAP. Finally, let's look at those persistent sites that are out, broken, never working, or just plain problematic. Making a noise on social media about these sites is super important and being relentless but polite and assertive will help you achieve your goals. Of course, if there is a network that is constantly underperforming or isn't pulling its weight, you can also kick it up a notch. So reach out to your local government, your local legislators, and point out that a particular site isn't doing its best to keep a vital EV infrastructure running. Given that many countries and regions now tie charging station funding to reliability, it's important to create that paper trail. Finally, don't just assume that someone else is going to fix it. If you encounter an issue, take time out to report it. Basically, if you shrug and move on, the provider may not know that there's actually an issue. There could be a communications fault that hasn't become apparent, some vandalism that isn't known about, or a back-end failure that the provider isn't aware of. I'm sure you know this one. There was an important job that needed to be done, and everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did. Somebody got angry because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought that anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. And it ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. Just don't be like any of those. Just, just do it. Report it. Make it better for all of us, eh? So there you have it. Be a good charging citizen when you use a charging network. Don't cut queues and treat the units with respect, even if they're broken. And perhaps together we can work to hold charging providers to account when they don't fix things, while also celebrating when they do. And whatever you're doing this weekend, have a good one. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of more than the 1500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure that we can remain 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There's a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just over $10 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters. Look, it's Moose, Dom, Stefan Venti, Tom G. Richardson, Benjamin Ford, Indigo, and Kem. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your week of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations, and we even have an old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at, address also below. And if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store also linked below. This month, we are celebrating a new amazing t-shirt design by our in-house artist and animator, Erin. 
Get yours today by heading to our Redbubble store. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you've subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we also think this one is well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving!